Hey everybody, today I want to talk about the section widget in D5 Render. If you're unfamiliar with what it is, it's a dynamic section plane that can literally cut away your model. So look at this, I've created this plane and I'm able to remove parts of my project. I can rotate it and flip it. Super useful utility. So I want to show you how to use it, why you'd use it, and some pro tips to make your life a little bit easier. So let's get started. I'm going to delete it. If you look up here, you'll see that I have a button for sections. And if you're looking at your screen and following along, you might realize you don't have this. So the reason is it's hidden under the widget section. So if you go over to menu, preference, and then widget, this is where D5 stores all their like secret beta tools. So right here is section tools. If I unclick it, it disappears. When I click it, it comes back. So once you have that set up, I'm going to X this out. And I'm going to click this and you're going to have two options and I'll go through what each does, but the plane is the option we were looking at before. And what's really nice about this tool is you can actually make like rendered floor plans or dollhouse views of your project. So it's really typical that, you know, your client doesn't understand the 2d floor plans and they want to see a visual where they can kind of see the verticals and the depth and the space with all the materials. So it's like an enhanced floor plan. And what's nice is you can even do a top-down view and have a rendered floor plan like this. So super nifty. So I wanna go over some of the settings that come with this. First setting is visibility on layer. You can actually exclude layers. So if you're organized, you can actually have some layers disappear and some appear based on the visibility here. The other thing is the section side. So this is section A, this is section side B. So look at this. So now it's going the other way. So now I'm going up and down rather than bottom. Look at that. So that's what that flipper is. And then the next useful tool, which is great if you're doing the render floor plans. And I say it's useful because, you know, as designers and architects, when we cut a plan or a section, we use a technique called poche. And poche is basically just filling in the gaps. So you see here, you see this? We don't want to show this. That's ugly, right? If we go to fill and hit preview fill color, it's actually going to analyze all the gaps in the model and fill it in with a color. And I can dynamically change the color just so it sticks out. So this is a really nice way to save you some time because typically you'd have to do this, cut your section, then bring it to Photoshop and then fill in all the gaps, complete pain in the butt. This is super quick and easy. If you move it, you will need to re-preview it. So here I'm showing it with a color. You could also do it with a texture. So if I click this and grab a chipboard and I'm going to zoom in, it might not look like much has changed, but if I remove this color and make it, you'll see I have this texture, this chipboard texture as the fill material. So up to you what you want to do, but again, pointing that out because I feel like this is a huge time saver. The next one I want to point out is affected by light. So I'm going to rotate this just so you can see what's going on in in section view. So right now the windows are the only thing letting light in, right? So you can see the light coming in through here, right? So if I were to toggle this setting affected by light, it's almost like all the light is coming in from the side. It's like it removed the part that's being chopped out. So to illustrate that a little bit better, let me switch my azimuth a little bit. So you see how the light is coming from where I'm cutting it as opposed to just from the ceiling. So let me turn that off. Notice how it got darker. So that's useful if you have an issue where it's not being lit correctly. You can just do this. This is useful if you're doing a plan view. So watch the difference. I'll go here. And you see how I'm using the gizmo? A little hack, you could just switch to this, your rotation, and zero that out as needed. So now, if I were to go over to camera, top down, before, and after. And there's pros and cons to both, but again, I want to point out the difference because it might be easier for you to just turn on affected by light. That way you don't need to worry about setting up your settings to kind of like get the light in the right spot, because you can see no matter what I do, I'm not going to get it lit perfectly. It might come out a little bit dark and gloomy, which, you know, isn't what you want to show your client, right? So that is a really nice way to just kind of remove whatever um, is on top and let the light come through. So you can see like even the columns are getting like a nice little shadow. So this is great. If it's too bright, all you have to do is just lower your exposure a bit. So I could really go here and lower that. And now that looks a little bit more presentable. So that's super handy. The other thing I'll point out, the bottom setting affected by weather. 
So if I were to go to environment and go to precipitation, and let's say I, I make it snowy, right? And I increase the strength, I increase the puddle, I increase everything. You'll notice that there's no weather in here, right? Unless I go in and I check mark affected by weather. So now my pool is now covered in snow. So if you're realizing, okay, my weather's not coming in here and you need it for some odd reason, that's the button you would use. Okay, so now that we talked about the plane, I wanna talk about the section box and then I'll give you some tips. So before I go to section cube, let me just turn off the weather. I'll click here and now switch to section cube. So it doesn't look like anything's happening because I'm not actually cutting into anything yet. Notice how once I drop it in, it's removing the ceiling, which is really cool. So a little tip, you see how I have this little link button? If I increase this by one zero, it's going to scale uniformly. If I break this, it's no longer going to be uniform. So let me remove a zero. And now only one direction is affected by that, not all of them. So that's useful if you just need to, you know, break the uniform scale. So I'm going to toggle that back on. So I really like the cube. This method, I think is a little weird because it's just like removing a portion of the, uh, the building, which, you know, maybe in some scenarios is useful. I personally like to flip it with this guy outside. So now look at this. Now I have a nice detailed section of my project. So usually I do something like, like this, where I can see, you know, the ceiling, the floor and the wall all at the same time. This is a useful diagram and this is very typical in architecture. And this is a huge time saver. All I have to do is add some pochet. It'll fill in the main gaps. There we go. And now I have a diagram ready to go. And if I find the background distracting, all I have to do is swap my HDRI to be the default white one right here, pure white. And there we go. And now I can lower my exposure a bit. Perfect. So you've got a diagram ready to go. Other things I'll point out is the planes and the cubes, you can actually support multiple ones. So if I put a plane down like this and then I grab another one and let's say I go this way, now I'm chopping it in two directions. I'm cutting it horizontally and vertically. So this is useful if you need to get a little creative with your sections and the box isn't doing it for you. This is perfect for that. Yeah, you could even do on an angle. So what I like to do is I like to put these on its own layer. And the reason I do that is because the scenes can actually remember the state of the section. So watch this, I'm gonna make a new layer and I'll call this section. And if you have a bunch of objects in your outliner and it's difficult to find, just click this and go to section and I'll just show you all your section planes. So now that I have a section layer, I wanna make sure my section plane is on that layer. So click your plane, go up here, go to section, and now I can toggle it on and off. So if I were to go to this view right here, I now have the section plane there, but let's say I don't want that. What I would do is I would create a new view, turn off my section and then sync it. And now I can easily switch between the two. So this is great if you need to do section diagrams, but you don't want it to affect all your scene. One thing I will point out by default, when you add a plane, it will apply itself to all the scenes. So it's a little bit of a bummer. You need to kind of go in and resync all your views on um, just so the plane's not there. But obviously if you want the plane, keep it. But I've always found it to be super useful to have it on its own dedicated layer like this. That way, as you're working, let's say you're, let me switch to P down here. That way you're working, you wanna see the inside, maybe you're dropping some assets, you can just toggle this on and there you go. 